at this point, the apparel industry, they haven't found a way to create soft fabrics without using some of these chemicals. And so the closed loop process really is providing a way to um, still be able to do this, but in a sustainable way. Right, because the whole thing is that when these clothes end up in a landfill, because every, you know, after a while, everything <laughs> does end up um, after wear and tear, um, that, it, that it, it breaks down and like you were saying, those plastics are here forever. You know, we know that you have a quality product and it's gonna be recycled a lot, but when it eventually yeah. meets its end. The other um, places where we're trying to be sustainable too is how do we keep our products out of the landfill? And that was one of the places where you guys came in was like, oh, here's a company we can partner with that can get some, you know, cause the, Part of the apparel industry is that uh, we get aftermarket issues where you get a run of fabric that has um, an error, or it wasn't sewn correctly, or they didn't dye it the right color. You know, how do you handle returns in a sustainable way? And um, Or people, what do they do with their old clothes that they don't want anymore? So it's like, how do we um, come up with ways to keep those things out of the landfill? And that, you know, that that part so we, we we are in the process of figuring all of that out and um you guys are one of the partners in that why is it important that you shared on your website that you work with the same company in china for the or the same workers for the um for 15 years why was that an important thing for you to share um because i think that um people get the idea that sewing overseas is always using, you know, labor at uh, low wages or labor where um, factory conditions aren't being cared for. Um, and a lot of times, in our case, the bamboo is grown right in China and to keep our footprint low, we also need to sew in China. Um, because there's also, if we were to bring the the fiber, have the fiber made in another country that maybe doesn't have the stigma of low wage workers, then it requires it going across the ocean one more time, you know. So we monitor our factory really closely. In fact, they've become family and friends. And they're they're a part, they're a part of us and a part of what we do. And we want people to know that they're the same, that just because our factory is in China. It does it could be here in the United States. It would be just like being here in the United States or somewhere where that they perceive things to be different, you know? And so um and that, you know, that the the Chinese people are really wonderful and they're really caring and they they are really proud of the job that they do for us. And um and it's like we just wanted to share that too. Last year during the pandemic. Um, uh -huh. It was a whole campaign called Pay Up where people were rallying to make sure that some of the people who got orders uh, last year were not, um, were not cheated out of the funds that they should have been receiving since they made the orders. You know, and that's also another wonderful thing because it's, it seems to me that you wouldn't have any of these concerns because just like you said, you're all one, the company is one. Yeah, and the other thing that we worked to do during the pandemic to actually prevent that was, and, and it actually started before the pandemic as one of our sustainable practices, is we don't over order. We order what we know we can sell and we pay more to do that. So mm -hmm. what the big retailers often do is they order large quantities of fabric. They produce large quantities of they use data projections to produce their clothing and they, um, they end up with a lot of extra. So mm -hmm. um, we, we, we try to keep it small. We do small product runs. Uh, we pay more for that, which makes our products cost slightly more mm -hmm. on the end. But in the process, we're able to keep our workers working. We're able to not have to cancel orders if a situation arises where like the pandemic, for instance. Right. So um, we we did experience delayed shipping like everyone else, but you know, it was really okay because of how our system works. We get continuous small orders throughout the year. 
so they just sort of stacked up in a different way. And you did not have the same issues during the pandemic, as far as some some companies, as far as losing um, losing ground. No, we actually, amazingly, our products were something people really wanted. I mean, I'm very grateful for our products were something people really wanted at home, comfortable bamboo pajamas or loungewear and bamboo bedding. <laughs> Everybody wants to be comfortable at home. If you're working from home, you don't want to wear, I know I wanted to buy like everything slouchy, so, <laughs> you know. Like products still look good over zoom so <laughs> right. <laughs> right you still have to look good over zoom that's the that's the whole thing so one of the things that I also read about is that one of your employees kind of had a, a a vision of wanting to travel during the pandemic and yeah. then started to draw out um, a design about some of the places or tell me what what exactly it was what, what was it that yeah. she designed she's a really amazing artist and she drew a seaside print um, on her ipad and we turned it into a fabric and it um it, it's really great what we did during the pandemic is because we didn't have access to a lot of our outside partners we just brought everything in house and we gave everyone our employees the opportunity to be more creative do more things and um it worked out really well <laughs> <laughs> and so now we're keeping that model we're keeping the model of um where we can you know have more flexibility with our jobs more flexibility working being able to allow our employees to be more creative and be more a part of all the process and, 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 so, what did, and what did you learn during that time? Um, what did you learn from that whole time? Because you said you said creative creativity kind of grew in that. Yeah, in that it, it was really interesting because I think that we learned that you could um, have opportunity in an adversity in at what would normally be adverse situations. You know, instead of all of us panicking and worrying about the future. We just turned that energy towards creating opportunity where we could. And um, I think that was a big, it was a big lesson in surrender <laughs> <laughs> um, and trust in really trusting um, each other, trusting each other to get our jobs done mm -hmm. um, and uh, really just um, being supportive. Also, you know, really learning to truly support each other in our positions to create a better work environment. And you say it's a, it's a small company, so I imagine that, that it really does count um, yeah. how you can depend on each other. Yeah, there's 11 of us total. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Rachel and I um, are both employees as well, so we have job tasks and all of those things, not just managing. <laughs> um, everybody here kind of wears multiple hats. We can all sort of come in and help on anybody's position in case you know they need assistance or need need time and so that happened through the pandemic you know where some of us work from home some of us were in the warehouse we switched places you know we just all kind of did what we could um, to support each other and so what is your hope as far as um, sustainability goes in your industry in the retail industry what do you want to see on a large scale basis yeah, I would like to see on a large scale basis more companies working to um, to look at all aspects of the apparel industry and how um, from our footprints and to not just our, not just our fabrics, but our our fabrics, our manufacturing, our um, our shipping, our employee culture, our community culture, because I think all of it um, really is part of the sustainability process. It's not just that our fabrics are, you know, socially or eco, we, we should all be socially responsible.